This is Economic Impact. Conversations from Emirates Development Bank. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Economic Impact. This time I'm honored to say that we're joined by the Chief Executive Officer of Sharjah Research Technology and Innovation Park, SRTIP. He's also a board member, an investor, and an advisor, and he is a person who strongly believes that knowledge and the knowledge economy itself is a prerequisite for growth, and it is something that we should all undoubtedly invest in. Your Excellency, Mr. Hussein Al Mahmoudi, it's a pleasure to welcome you to Economic Impact. Thank you very much, Ahmed, uh, for giving me this opportunity, and it's really great to be with you here. Thank you so much. Appreciate having you. If I could start by asking you a bit about your background, a bit about in, uh, the journey of your career and, and work. Um, it's an incredibly interesting organization that you're currently heading. Um, and it's very interesting for us to hear how did this evolve and how did you get to this point of where you are today? Uh, my name is Hussein Al Mahmoudi. I've been very fortunate uh, to be born and grown in, in, in Sharjah in the UAE. Uh, my background is uh, it's a normal Emirati background. Uh, I went to school here. I grew up in our neighborhood and 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 seen the growth of the country. I all, always uh, say I'm very proud that I was born in 1972 because this is when the country also uh, started almost and and my age is the age of the of the country so I, i've seen the growth of the country and i've been part of uh, you know uh, each each uh, period uh, i uh, did my studies in us i did a double major uh, in economics and communication i did a master as well at the american university of sharjah uh, my career started with an oil and gas mm-hmm. and uh, i was uh, part of the emirates national oil company Okay. and uh, been involved in the uh, downstream business of oil and gas and also the upstream business. And uh, at some point in 2000, His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed announced Dubai Internet City Project. So I thought oil and gas was boring mm. uh, industry and I, I decided to join Dubai Internet City. So I was part of the team that started that project in 2000. Of course, it was an exciting uh, project because it's really uh, presented the new economy Right. Uh, in the UAE. So we started with Dubai Intercity and then there was a Dubai Media City and then also the Knowledge uh, Hub. Right. Uh, in two years, I thought uh, technology is uh, too volatile and I decided to go back to oil and gas. So I, I was right. part of the Royal Dutch Shell. Spent eight years there doing uh, different type of work from health, safety, security, and environment to business development for both upstream and downstream business. Of course, part of a being being part of a global company gave me a, a global perspective uh, and working with different stakeholders. And from there, I was uh, asked to uh, join the Chamber of Commerce in Sharjah. So I was Director General of the Chamber of Commerce uh, in Sharjah for all nearly eight years, uh, developing different uh, uh, initiatives, small and medium acts, uh, uh, Sharjah Export Center, uh, Arbitration Center, the International uh, Trade Center for different countries, and also, of course, serving uh, the big size uh, community of the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, following my experience with the Chamber, I was uh, tasked with starting this project, this exciting project with Sharjah Research and Technology Park. And what year was that? This was in 2016. 2016. Okay. Yes, and uh, this was a, a part of a bigger picture that uh, His Highness the ruler of Sharjah mm-hmm. had for the for for the uh, the education sector in Sharjah, right? The research sector in Sharjah and the innovation sector in Sharjah, right? So in 2016, uh, there was aspiration uh, that. Uh, we wanted to transform the universities in Sharjah from education only to research-based universities. Right. To do that, we had to do three things. One of them is to create also, in addition to this transformation within the education sector, to create a platform mm-hmm. where this innovation and research will take place. So right. we created Dubai Internet. Uh, sorry, we created Sharjah Research and Technology Park. Right. So the park is really a platform where private sector, government sector, academia, and non government sector can join and and co-create and co-invent. And the last one, of course, we created also the AUS Enterprise, which is the commercial vehicle to allow innovation and uh, company and enterprise to be created. Hmm. So this is started in 2016. We moved in this beautiful building um, in, uh, I think, 2001. Okay. So nearly with the- In 21, you mean? In 21, exactly. Yes. 
2021 yes exactly so so this has been the journey in a nutshell right yeah fantastic um such an interesting organization and to have something like that here in the UAE is something we really should take pride in uh, i'm very interested uh, because it's a a public private partnership to work with the university as you mentioned to become not just a teaching university but a research and development university yes. um, that of course also i'm sure the benefits are it attracts fantastic minds from around the region and the world to come and work um, and live in Sharjah. Can you give me some of the um, interesting stories or interesting um, successes of some of the uh, IP or, 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 or projects that have de- developed and built here? Yeah. So since our inception, we've always focused on four main uh, yeah. driver objectives. Number one, we wanted to create the best ecosystem that allow technology, enterprises, startup to thrive. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to create a, a holistic infrastructure, which not only just focuses on the hard infrastructure, the building and the lab, and but yep. also the soft infrastructure, including policies, legislation that are fit for purpose. So that was the first driver. The second was talent. Uh, we were lucky to be part of the largest university city in the region. Right. Uh, we have more than 20 universities and education institutions in this place. Mm-hmm. And this for us was a big, big, big opportunity to leverage this. So talent development, human capital is a key driver, a key focus for us. The third driver is really development of technology. Mm-hmm. And we do this by either commercializing the IP from the universities right. or by attracting companies with IP that we can grow up and last but not least creating enterprises. So some of the examples that we are very proud of, for example, in the field of, let's say, a special conductive concrete. This is a special type of concrete that prevent any electrowave attack. Conductive concrete. Exactly, on your critical facility. Mm-hmm. So this is an IP that we basically developed at the university, mm. commercializing and being commercialized at the park and hopefully sold to the private sector. It was developed by our professors at universities and students mm. and commercialized at the uh, park here. So this is one example. Another example, of course, the additive manufacturing and 3D. We are very proud to say that we have probably the largest additive manufacturing and 3D facilities in the country. 3D printing. Exactly. So under the umbrella of the park, we can print metal, plastic, wow. titanium, concrete, wow. all under one umbrella. So our labs basically spread all over this 20 million square feet piece of land. Okay. With this, of course, when we do these things, we develop the four elements I was talking to you. So mm. we make sure that we have the right environment and ecosystem to allow this type of technology to flourish. We make sure that we also develop talents because one of the challenges, as you appreciate, and this is everywhere, is the availability of skilled talent. We are talking about right cutting edge technology, we're talking about emerging technologies that you will not necessarily have them. So part of whatever we do, we try to create those four elements, ecosystem, Mm -hmm. policy, talent, the technology, and making sure that we try to commercialize those technologies. Uh, We also are very proud to probably, we have one of the largest transport and logistics hub in the region. Mm. We managed to attract major investments here. One of the ma- biggest inv- investment here was almost $80 million investment in transport and logistics, basically the new sky train. Okay, so the creation of new solutions absolutely, for transport absolutely. and logistics. Okay. And sustainable solution as well. So, right. so most of uh, most of our uh, project, you will see, you know, it's always include an element of sustainability. Right. So, so the transport and logistics uh, focus is also big. We we do have Sky, Sky. We've uh, hosted also one of the, you know, like star startups, uh, which is which is the first solar car in the world. Which is, uh, which is uh, I think I read about that in the news. Year. Yes, we uh, created through our labs the first e-bike in the UAE, mm. uh, designed, developed by an Emirati. So whenever we focus, we make sure that we hit those. those. So these are some of the examples I wanted to share with you. That's amazing. Yeah. I have so many questions, but I'm going to start yeah, with two. Sure. Um, first, of, because you, you, you touched on a couple of times the policies. Yes. Uh, and you're absolutely right. You need to create the right policies in order to create an environment that is fit for purpose, yes. but also can yes. thrive. Anything special that you want to mention about those policies that were created specifically for Sharjah and the UAE? Yes. So, 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 just an example of our 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 own park because I think mm. it's part of UAE. But I think we are very lucky to have a policy that is fit for purpose. Mm. Uh, we, you know, there's no textbook that you can learn how to develop innovation ecosystem because each city, each country is different. Right. So for us, we 
knew this from day one that mm-hmm. I cannot cut and paste what is happening in Boston or Shanghai or or mm-hmm. or, 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 or 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 Kuchin or or or, or uh, uh, Singapore or Hong Kong. I have to develop my own policies and legislations. The good thing about what we do here is the speed of taking decisions and the involvement of the top uh, leadership. That gives us a big advantage. Uh, We wanted to create funds that support the development of our ecosystem. In six months, we managed to introduce a new tax. Basically, it was called an innovation dirham tax that will allow and, and, and promote and enable startups and, 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 and R&D activities to happen here. So we change the whole policy. Uh, the registration of companies mm-hmm. and the way that we do them here is, is, is very fast. Uh, the, 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 the whole incubation ecosystem and the policies we have supports the uh, uh, drive that we're trying to achieve. Amazing. And then you touched on talent and the attraction of talent. So I'm assuming business owners, yes. entrepreneurs, the people with the ideas. Yes. How do people like that approach you? I'm just curious, you know, if I had a friend, yes. um, if someone I knew had some kind of an innovative yeah. concept, yeah. what would they do with that concept? Would yeah. they come and approach you directly? Would they go to a website? Yeah. Would they meet with someone? How yeah. does that work? Yeah. So so basically we have uh, today, for example, uh, uh, Sharjah Open Innovation Lab. Mm-hmm. Which is something very unique. I think we are we probably have the the largest uh, uh, vocational training labs in the country. It's the three mm-hmm. floors in this building, and this is a place where everybody comes and 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 engage. Whether you are a faculty or a startups or a business uh, man or woman or an investor or a government, they all come and 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 and, and engage in this open innovation. Uh, environment. So there are people, professional people there who can help startups or people who are trying to, you know, you know, you know, develop their business, especially in in deep tech. Yeah. Uh, so this is one way. The other way is also we go and identify those people. Of course, we run different programs like our Sharjah Advanced Industry Accelerator. It's been running right. for the past now four years. We are very proud of it. We we get almost 5,000 applicants every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have presidents of, of countries that spoke about it. The Brazilian president actually you know, tweeted our, about our, our, our accelerator. So it's been a, a source of success and a source of uh, 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 an opportunity to identify uh, you know, start up with technologies. Of course, once we identify them, we work with partners like you mm-hmm. at Emirates uh, Development Bank to also see how we can support those startups. How can we build opportunities and new opportunities? So there's, uh, you know, different uh, activities that we run to basically attract those people here. Of course, the university is a big source for us. So, so, so we also engage with universities right. through different uh, hackathons and different activities to basically try to attract startups as well. And talents. Would you say that um, what, as a percentage of the uh, people that work, uh, or let's say the companies that are attracted to work within the uh, the research park, the research innovation park, um, how many are fresh graduate university students, and how many are let's say established entrepreneurs that are doing businesses? Is a is there a skew towards one? One segment versus the I other. I think I think I think ninety percent those are established companies. Are established. Okay. Established companies, okay. and I think ten percent are are our students. However, mm-hmm. we are trying to increase that by working with great partners like Shira, right? Like Ruwad, like Emirates Development Bank, right. and create the framework that will allow more students to take the steps. As you appreciate, there are a lot of structural. Uh, environment that we have to create to allow those students, professors, Mm -hmm. to be part of the business community. Mm -hmm. It has to do with their visas, it has to do with their work, it has to do with their contracts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we are working on it now, and we're working with Shara on on, on encouraging students to come and make it easier for them to be able to start their businesses as well. Great, yeah, right. What about the future? Um, There's so much that's happening today, so much that's been done over the past uh, eight years since your establishment. Um, and it sounds like you know some fantastic things have been have been happening. How do you foresee the future um, for the uh, Sharjah Research uh, Technology Innovation Park? Um, do you see more commercialization of the concepts and the businesses? Are you uh, income generating today? And and is there a plan for this to become the de- the development hub of new sectors for Sharjah for the future. It sounds to me very much like sure. the incubation of these sectors is happening sure. here. Sure, We have to, to remember, the Sharjah Research and Technology Park is 
an integral part of the UAE agenda and UAE vision. Right. Uh, the country has identified innovation as a key uh, driver for its growth. And no economy. We can see this in Abu Dhabi. We can see this in Dubai. We can see this in Sharjah and elsewhere. So we are part of that big picture. Mm-hmm. And the 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 park basically is an economic driver of the new economy. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do we see this? We are part of the big topics. Whether we're talking about artificial intelligence, we have our own AI hub here that we are trying to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that I we are very proud. Of, we are probably one of the We host here the fairest uh, fully sustainable data center and high performance computing facilities in the region. It's probably the numbers, and that's all private investment. Mm. So how do we see this? We see this by identifying and working with emerging technology, where we're t- whether we're talking about AI, or we're talking about transport and logistics, or we're talking about healthcare or advanced manufacturing. Mm-hmm. And we work by developing a private-public partnership by engaging the private sector. One thing that we are very proud here is most of what you see is all private sector investments. Okay. So almost 100%. Other wow. than the building, everything yeah. you see here private is sector. all private sector. Whether we're talking about the high-performance computing facility or the 3D printers or the VR, AR, uh, mixed reality uh, labs we have, it's all private Can sector. Can you tell us what is that amount over the eight years? Almost $100 million. Dollars. Okay. Sure. Almost $100 million. Dollars. Okay. And research activities. Research. That's yeah. the difference. Transport hub alone is $80 million. Dollars. Okay, wow. Testing next generation train technology mm-hmm. in UAE mm. here. Mm. So so, so the, the, the future is very bright because, you know, when we see UAE, UAE is today is... is is a haven for all uh, technologists in the world. Mm-hmm. People come here because they know that they can get talents. They know that they are protected. They know that we have policies that en- uh, enable of, of, of big businesses. Mm-hmm. And they know that there's also money here that they can right. start their businesses. So right. we, are cry- we are creating an environment to basically attract them and, and grow these companies and take them hopefully to the world. Fantastic. And any plans or any major objectives for the future over, let's say, the next five to 10 year horizon? Absolutely. So so we are at the moment uh, just actually finalized our, our strategy. Uh, I believe uh, 2023 was the end of the first phase of this park. Mm. So we have established the basic, the brand, the community, the ecosystem. Going forward, you will see more uh, focus on industries mm-hmm. and more interaction with industries going forward you'll see more focused on uh, universities ip and commercialization mm-hmm. and going forward you'll see more uh, focus on making sure that our uh, ecosystem more competitive whether the availability of funds working with with different financial institutions like yourself and others so and of course focus on talent as well Fantastic. Mr. Hussein Al-Mahmoudi, thank you so much for your time today. It's much appreciated. We wish you the best of luck on your journey. And we will be there, inshallah, with you as Emirates Development Bank. Step thank by step, you, inshallah. Mr. Ahmad, and uh, congratulations on today's events. And uh, and really, I, 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 I enjoyed our discussion today. And I look forward to also working with you and also working with your audiences and, 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 and basically building great future together. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Economic Impact. Conversations from Emirates Development Bank.